perhaps you're thinking of buying your first recorder and everyone has recommended the H4n Pro to you. Maybe you're thinking about starting a podcast or you want to start recording sound effects and you're wondering what recorder you should buy in order to get started. No matter what the case may be, in this video we're going to talk about the Zoom H4n Pro. I'm going to go over what it can and can't do and who should buy it. As a quick note, I've also done a review on the Zoom H6 and I plan on doing more reviews of the Zoom H series. If you're interested, I have a link down below to the playlist where you can check them out. The Zoom H4n Pro has two XLR inputs and a 3.5mm stereo mini jack input. Simply put, the XLR inputs are for larger microphones such as the ones you'd use on the podcast or shotgun mics which are used to record dialogue in film or sound effects. The 3.5mm stereo mini jack input accepts TS or TRS plugs. Using the TS plug will give you a mono sound which is only one track and which will be present on the left hand side. If you connect a TRS plug to it, the Zoom H4M Pro will record a stereo signal. This is useful if you need to plug in a lavalier mic in order to record dialogue. On the Zoom H4n Pro, the 3.5mm input is built into the recorder and it can be found on the back towards the top. Bear in mind that your lav mic might require 2.5V plug-in power, which the H4n Pro can provide. This can be done by going into Menu, Input, Plug-in Power and then selecting On. The same applies to phantom power if you're using a condenser microphone which needs it. If you have a smartphone lavalier microphone, chances are it has a TRRS plug which will not work with this recorder. If you plan on doing journalism or recording one-on-one -on -one interviews which would only require a maximum of two external microphones, the two XLR inputs on the Zoom H4 Pro will suffice. If you plan on recording a podcast, bear in mind the two microphone limitation. If you need more inputs, you might want to have a look at the Zoom H6. Check down below for a link to that video. The H4M Pro should be able to run for about 6 hours. From my experience and the experience of others, the H4M Pro eats through batteries, so you might want to pack spares if you'll be out recording for more than a few hours. Bear in mind that your mileage may vary as certain variables such as whether you're using phantom power can affect how long the recorder can go for. Even though the Zoom H4M Pro is relatively light, coming in at just 280 grams, much like its brothers the Zoom H5 and Zoom H6, it feels sturdy in the hand and it looks rather rugged. As I've said in the past, you should always treat your equipment with care, but I personally wouldn't be too worried about roughing this recorder up a bit. The Zoom H4n Pro is really portable and it comes with a very useful plastic case for it. The case does not have any cushioning and it does not look like it could protect the recorder from water damage, but it should protect it from getting scuff marks or scratches whilst in your bag. When it comes to the display, the H4n Pro has a 1.9 inch backlit LCD. This is of course fantastic if you're recording in low light, as you won't have to strain your eyes in order to see what's going on. If you're mounting the recorder on top of a DSLR camera, the position of the screen isn't great, as you can't really see what's happening. But if you're looking down at the recorder, then it will be just fine. In regards to self-noise, it isn't the greatest device out there. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're going to record voiceovers, loud dialogue, loud sound effects, loud music, etc, then it will be fine. On the other hand, if you want to record very quiet ambiences, you're going to have a difficult time as there will be quite a bit of hiss when you increase the volume later on. If quieter ambiences are what you're looking for, I'd recommend some of the other Zoom H series devices or the Sony PCMD100. I have links down below if you want to see their reviews. If we're talking specs, the Zoom H4M Pro can do 4 track simultaneous recording and it can record up to 24 bit by 96 kilohertz. If you need to record a voiceover or dialogue, all you need is 24 bit by 48 kilohertz, but if you want to record sound effects, being able to do so at 96 kilohertz would allow you more flexibility during post production. 
Whilst the Zoom H4M Pro does not offer any built-in storage, it can record directly to SD and SDHC cards up to 32GB in size. Even if you're recording in 96kHz, that's a lot of space for your recordings. If you're recording a stereo track at 24 bit by 48 kilohertz, 32 gigabytes should in theory allow you to record about 2000 minutes or 33 hours. Most SD cards should work, though I've included a list down below in the description that tells you which cards work with the Zoom H4M Pro officially. Speaking of SD cards, I've read reports that apparently the startup time of the H4M Pro can increase if you're using a larger SD card. In fact, it took mine nearly a minute to start up with a 32GB SD card, so bear that in mind. Most people seem to recommend that you use a smaller card if possible in order to cut down on the startup time. That being said, formatting the SD card whilst inside the H4M Pro does seem to cut down on the startup time significantly. This does not seem to be an issue with the H5 or S6 models. Not only can the H4N Pro be used as a field recorder, but you can also use it as an audio interface for your computer. All you need to do is connect it to your computer or laptop via USB cable and set it up. If you have to record outdoors, which might be the case if you're a journalist, field recordist, sound effects recordist, if you're recording a live band or more, you're going to need wind protection. When outdoors, any real gust of wind will make the recording unusable. Luckily, Rycote sells a free-in-one solution for the Zoom H4M Pro. A grip, by which you can hold the recorder, a shock mount, which basically eliminates handling noise, and a good quality windshield, which will protect the microphone from wind, although very strong winds might still affect the microphone. In terms of gain control, you have to use the two switches on the side of the device. A dial would be much better, but then again the H4M Pro is a budget device. So, should you buy it? The Zoom H4M Pro is rugged, affordable and versatile, with great sound quality and dual XLR inputs. If that's all you need, the H4M Pro would be a great investment. That being said, if you think you might one day need to plug in a few extra microphones, it's worth spending a little bit of extra money and getting the Zoom H6. If you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video, or see how much they cost in your country, I have a link down below where you can view them. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.